Hi everybody, I'm Trey Merkley and this is Fun with Frontends in Python. So just kind of go over what we're going to talk about. First we're going to talk about the language of Python. Then we're going to talk about the Qt framework, which is going to provide the front end for Python. We're going to talk about the benefits of going about through this approach and some of the caveats as well. I'm going to show you an example in code and then an actual sample window using that code. And then I'm going to show you how you can get started. So Python, the language that most of us know and love, and it's been around for a while. Python is a language that's been used for many, many years to make complex logic feel simple. It is simple, but it is also powerful. However, its life has been dominated by being the behind-the-scenes logic, logic supporting applications like DevOps and data science, but not on the front end, which is a shame because it's a great la language for quickly producing robust front ends that are the envy of WinForms. So how do you pull off a pure Python front end with the graphical framework Qt? Qt is a GUI framework written in C++ and ported to many languages, Python among them. It is easy, it is object-oriented, and portable to every major operating system, from Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. Additionally, it was first released in 1995 and has been actively developed by multiple organizations, making it one of the most stable GUI frameworks out there. So. Why would you want to do this? What are some benefits of writing a GUI in Python? Well, there are some pretty great benefits to me in addition to the ones above about Python and Qt independently. When I was in school, all GUIs were made in WinForms using Visual Studio, and as a Linux user, this irked me to no end, because not only could I not develop and run anything I wrote on my own software, because it was my first time developing software, it really bothered me that I didn't understand how the infrastructure of .NET and WinForms worked, and how I could use the graphical editor to make GUIs, and how the code I wrote communicated with it. To me, Qt is a much more clear way of showing the logic of how you write and how all of it works together. You write all the GUI code yourself until you figure out a snippet system that works for you. And then you tie all the logic to it by hand. You know where everything is at all times, and since you're writing your front end in Python, you're almost certainly writing your back end logic also in Python. And having all of your code in one language and having it all hooked together by hand makes debugging much easier and kind of leading into that. Python is easy, and using Qt is almost easier. It is intuitive for beginners and can work as an easy prototyping framework for more experienced developers. Finally, Qt and Python implementations of Qt are very popular, and as a result, there's a lot of information out there on how to use it. Rather than having to only use Qt's documentation, there are guides all over on how to use, do this stuff, and there's a great community built around developing front with Python. So what are some of the drawbacks of it? Well, Python is interpreted, so it is going to be technically slower than, say, C++ or C Sharp. However, it should not be noticeable to the average user, and you only really need to do, so do something else if your project grows to size such that maintaining the front end in Python just doesn't make sense, like if you're trying to glue Python to a C Sharp back end. However, if you notice that your applications are stealing more than their fair share of CPU cycles then, and it's starting to cause problems for user, then, users, then it might be time to port. Python is, for the most part, pretty good at package management. Unfortunately, operating systems are not. And as a result, rather than letting you do it on a per-application basis, operating systems install Python packages oftentimes globally. So you should be prepared to set up virtual environments and other isolation systems when shipping your apps to ensure they run without any unexpected problems. Finally, there is the hairy issue of PyQt5 versus PySci2. In, it, in the long and varied history of Python and Qt integration, there are actually two packages that provide Qt for Python, PyQt5 and PySide2. Bizarrely, PyQt5 is produced by a third-party software firm called Riverbank Computing, while PySide2 is currently is developed directly by the Qt company. I have personally run into problems using PyQt5 that I have not run into while using PySide2. However, you try whichever framework you want because they both have the same libraries and they have the same names and the same modules, so you can really drop in one or the other without having to change any of your logic, only the import statement bringing them in. So now let's look at some code. 
This is the complete code of a really simple application using PySide 2. We're going to walk through this starting from the top of the shebang. Now, looking at the user bin Python 3, remember that Python 2.7 is about to be retired, so the time to convert your, your code, if written in the Python 2.7 syntax, is now. We have to import the system module for Qt for it to function correctly, so all everything individ individually has to be imported. So we've got the application, the basic application that wraps everything together. We have the label that's going to produ produce the text, the widgets that are the individual components of the app, and the VBox layout that's going to hold all of the components of your application together. So first we use the um, app equals Q application sys argv that sets up the application and passes all the command line arguments to it. We set up the widget that's going to be the window itself. We set up the label that's going to hold everything together and then we create the label. Now the cool thing about Qt is that it actually has HTML style ta um, tagging. So I can actually set the font the way I would in an HTML document. And then from there, we just add everything together. We add the label to the widget, we add the widget to the layout, and then we set the layout to the window. And then we set the title for the uh, window entirely, and then we just show the window. And what you'll get is this. It's just a really sim simple application. Now, one thing to note about this is that I am right now writing this on my work Linux laptop. This is going to be different depending on which framework you're, uh, or which operating system you're writing this for, because it borrows from the um, Qt backend that's producing it. So this will look uh, differently on a Windows machine or on a um, Mac desktop. They each have their own um, visual framework for producing this, so they're going to look more like native applications on those versus what it looks like for me. So how do you get started? Well, I'm not really going to walk you through how to get set up with Python itself, because I would imagine there are other presentations I can do that, probably presentations that Techlahoma itself has done. So I'm going to just kind of show you how to get started with PySide. First, you'll want to install PySide 2, which will be the standard Python um, pip install PySide 2. Now, if your package manager offers it as its own package, install that one. You kind of want to avoid using pip as much as you can because it can cause um, conflicts, like I mentioned before. Now, like I said, that um, Qt for Python is very well documented. And so there's documentation that the Qt Foundation actually produces. So what you'll want to do is um, go to the Qt website and go to um, Qt for Python and go to their tutorials. In addition to that, just search on the internet. Go DuckDuckDo or Ecosia. Those are uh, both great search engines that I cannot promote more. And they are, and all you really need to do is just search your way through and try to find things because you will find great documentation for how to set this up. So that's everything. P Python and Qt go great together to produce front ends. Now all of the this this slide and all of the comments that go with it are going to be on my GitHub along with a few other examples of other code that I've written using Qt5 and uh, Python. In addition, uh, my Slack member ID is right here. I'm on the Techlahoma Slack. You can fi find me there. You can find me pretty much anywhere you like. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out and let me know and I'd be happy to help out.